Differentiating male from female turtle or tortoise is not always an easy task, even for some trained eyes. In this video, we're gonna take one type of tortoise and one type of turtle and go over the basics so you leave this video knowing how to tell male from female. This is Madagascar's one and only radiated tortoise. Now they may be critically endangered and they may be a species that you're not used to seeing, but fear not because the traits that they exhibit, which tell male from female are very classic and they can be applied to a wide variety of tortoise species. So let's get into it. Okay, first up is our male. Once fully grown, radiated tortoises are pretty easy to sex. So right off the bat, one thing we're gonna notice is that the male is the larger of the two genders. Other species, one for example, the red foot tortoise, you will see males get bigger than females. Not always the case, but in this case, this is the larger of the two. You're also gonna notice, once they're fully grown, that the male's head gets wider. I like to compare a lot of male of the species as having kind of a pit bull head when you compare it to the female that has a little bit of a narrower head. Now, moving on to the bottom, the plastron, this is where we're gonna see things get a little bit easier. What do you see here? Concavity. The plastron is concave. With tortoises and even some turtles, the male's plastron is typically going to be concave like this so that he can easily fit on the carapace, the back end of the carapace of the female during courtship. Otherwise, he'd simply just roll off. While on the subject of the plastron, you're going to notice these two scoots right here. These are called the anal scoots. They are wider. They form a really wide V, and that's because, well, the male's tail is huge, and he's gonna almost always carry it to the side, except for when he's actively breeding or when he's soaking in water. This part right here, this lobe, this is the supracaudal shield that comes off the carapace. You see how it curves inward like this? This is basically the shield to protect those precious reproductive organs that are inside the animal, which come out through the cloaca on the tail. While we're on the subject of the plastron, you don't want to keep these guys flipped over for long, but you do need to flip them over in order to accurately sex them. These two scoots are the guler scoots. In a lot of tortoise species, in the males, they are more pronounced because they use them to joust during the breeding season. The males will fight with each other and they will use these to try to flip each other over. They're not very exaggerated in the radiated tortoise, but in some species, they're incredibly exaggerated. All right, now we've got our female. She's a little bit smaller than the male. Now, again, with this species, the males are the larger of the two sexes, but that's not always the case. Herman's tortoises, for one example, the females are gonna be larger, but in this case, the females are a little bit smaller. So, smaller overall size, and also the head is a little bit narrower. Think of a little bit more petite than the male's pit bull head. Okay, when we look at the bottom, we're gonna notice that the plastron, the bottom shell here, is basically flat or level. And that's because the female doesn't need to fit on top of anybody, even though they will mount other females during the nesting season to compete for nesting areas because she needs to be thicker overall to carry large eggs that can be sometimes up to eight in one shot. When we look at the anal scoots on the plastron, you'll notice that they are not as widened as they are in the male. They're a little bit more of a sharper V. When we look at the tail, notice how much smaller it is than the males. She also tends to carry it outright instead of tightly tucked to one side. When you look at the base of the tail, which is closer to the plastron, you'll notice that it's very wide there and there's just kind of a little tip coming off there. That's because the female needs to pass the eggs right there through the cloaca. The supracaudal shield, as we saw in the male, is a little bit less encompassing of the tail because the female needs that area to be more widely open so that the eggs can pass through without breaking against the shell. And when we look at those guler scoots at the very top of the plastron, right underneath the throat of the animal, you'll notice how much smaller they are than they are in the male because the females really don't joust. All right, so there's how you tell male from female radiated tortoise, which can be applied to many other tortoise species. Let's move on to a turtle. Turtle, box turtle. Remember, box turtles are turtles, not tortoises. One reason why, they have slightly webbed feet. These are Florida box turtles. In my right hand is a male, in my left hand is a female. 
Like in some other turtle species, like the North American wood turtle, for example, the male Florida box turtle is going to be the larger of the two sexes. You'll notice off the bat that he has a very broad, longer, and even wider shell than the female. You'll also notice that he has a bigger, wider head. In most males, when you look at the carapace from the dorsal view, you'll see that the marginal scoots tend to flare out more so than a female typically would. When we go to the plastron, like we saw in the radiated tortoise, the male Florida box turtle and some other types of box turtles are concave so that the male can fit on the back of the female during courtship. Now, when we look at the tail of male box turtles, this is not always the most reliable indicator in telling male from female, but typically the male is going to have a thicker, longer tail, but it is very close with box turtles. It is not as drastic like what we saw in the radiated tortoise and many other turtle or tortoise species. One of the biggest indicators in telling if a box turtle is male, believe it or not, is looking at the rear limbs and feet. They are huge. In some cases, they look as though they are not proportionate to the rest of the body. And when you look at those sharp, talon-like claws on the rear feet, you'll notice how long and large, especially the claw in the middle toe is. It is worth noting that with some box turtles, the eastern box turtle for example, the males will typically have those fiery red eyes, which easily will tell you that it is a male. Take Otis for example. But when it comes to the Florida box turtle, that is something you are not typically going to see. And both sexes will have darker colored eyes, like you see in this guy right here. Okay, here's our female Florida box turtle. You'll notice she is smaller. She has a more oval shaped shell and very minimal flaring at the marginal scoots on the back end. Take a look at her head. Her head is very petite. Compared to that male, it is much narrower and smaller and she doesn't have that pit bull look to her whatsoever. When we look at her bottom here, her plastron is perfectly level or flat. She has absolutely no concavity at all to her plastron, and that is because she needs to be thicker to carry the mass of the eggs that will develop inside her. Her tail, again, like I said with the male, when it comes to box turtles, the tails are not always that reliable, but her tail really is small. Very, very tiny, held very close to the end of the plastron there and her rear feet are notably shorter and smaller than the males. She does have powerful claws on her rear limbs because she needs to dig nests with those and of course burrow, but they are nothing compared to how massive they are and sharp and, and just kind of like gnarly like you see on a male. So there are two good examples for how to tell male from female when it comes to tortoises and when it comes to turtles, semi-terrestrial turtles. The Florida box turtle and the radiated tortoise have similarities in their patterns. That's why I chose them. They both have radiating patterns or striations or starbursts, if you want to call it, on their shells. But one is in fact a tortoise while the other is in fact a turtle. These are both two-year-olds right here and they show something very important. There is no way whatsoever to accurately tell the sex of either one of these young animals. And that's because turtles and tortoises do not show external sexual characteristics until they are getting closer to sexual maturity, which can sometimes take upwards of 20 years depending on the species. I would like to know if you guys wanna see us do other species in this kind of video where we take a close look at the male and female because hey, we didn't even look at an aquatic turtle in this video and we certainly can do that. So let me know your ideas in the comments and hey guys, don't forget, we're launching our Patreon very soon.